here. So thank you all for joining us uh, for our What the Detox presentation. And it's a perfect topic to help introduce our new program, Metamorphosis Five Day Spring Detox, which we'll explain a little later on. So this is Mary Ellen. And I'm Evie. Thank you all for being here today, as Mary Ellen said. If you, and I mentioned before, but if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, there's that chat bubble that's on the right side of your toolbar. Feel free to type in any of your questions as we go along, and we'll be happy to address them at the end of the presentation. Yeah. So great. As a way of introduction, Evie and I are certified holistic health and nutrition coaches, and we work with busy people who want to feel better and have more control over their lives, their health, and their happiness. And we first met during our health coaching certification program at the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and we found we were like-minded in our holistic approach to coaching and nutrition. However, we each bring different backgrounds and experience to our collaboration. And we've studied a variety of dietary theories and practical lifestyle coaching methods. And we're also both members of the International Association of Health Coaches and the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. And tonight we'll tell you about our experiences with toxins and detox. And we'll also talk about what it means to detox. Uh, is it right for you? What benefits can you expect? Yeah, so we're talking about toxins, and if a detox is a great way to get rid of toxins, what are those toxins? And then right. how to detox to feel better in just five days. Right. So as Mary Ellen mentioned, today we will be talking to you about toxins and how these toxins can affect how our bodies function. We've noticed through our work with clients over the past five to ten years that small changes can make a big difference in our looks and health over the long term. We love the metaphor, the ripple effect of health. Mm -hmm. And what, just, what does this mean? Well, just like one small drop in a pool of water will cause a rippling effect that spreads, one small positive change in your eating and lifestyle habits can lead to big health improvements down the line. Mm -hmm. We're so glad that you're here today so that we can share what we know about feeling and looking better based on our own experiences. For me, about 10 years ago, I was waking up every morning feeling achy and stiff. It seemed like I also felt tired all the time. And I just kind of thought that that's what it was like to get older. Well, luckily, working with a holistic practitioner, I learned how to change my diet and lifestyle habits. Making some small changes in my diet, I was soon waking up and jumping out of bed pain-free. Not only that, but without even thinking about it, I also lost those few extra pounds that I'd crept on and stayed on over the last years. I learned that the foods I had been eating contained toxic substances that were actually harming my body. I now eat foods that are easy for my body to process, and help it absorb the nutrients it needs to function optimally. By changing my diet and improving my lifestyle, I was able to help my body heal itself. No more inflammation or bloating, no more nagging joint pain. I have renewed energy, and believe it or not, I am now wearing the dress size I wore when I was in my 20s. Nice. <laughs> and similarly, by improving my diet and using detox methods, I discovered all sorts of digestive issues and food allergies, and I set out to correct these issues and chronic pain through diet and lifestyle. And I've helped clients do the same. And I continue to include alkalizing food, which we'll talk about tonight, in my diet. Mm -hmm. And I eat local and with the season, similar to the traditional Chinese medicine philosophy that is in our right. program. And Evie and I have experienced the health benefits of detoxing our food, our environment, and our thoughts. And we've also seen these benefits with our clients. Things like clear skin, um, getting rid of digestive issues, better sleep, less pain and inflammation. Right. More energy, pain-free mm -hmm. joints, losing that puffiness. 
So I'm wondering if any of you out there today are feeling some of these same symptoms. Uh, if you feel like it and want to share with us, uh, you can type in some of your experiences or comments in the chat bubble, and uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Many of you have already taken the detox quiz that was sent to you when you signed up for this webinar. For those of you who may not have received a copy, uh, feel free to email us and we'll send it out to you. It describes the symptoms listed here with a little bit more detail. But in general, if you recognize three or more of these symptoms, you will benefit from doing a detox. Yeah, this is a good way to step back and evaluate how you're feeling. And sometimes we just walk around believing that how you feel is as good as it gets or just normal. Right. I can't tell you how many clients I've had who have felt that way, only to be surprised at how good they feel by just making a few small changes. Yeah, same here. Right. So what can you expect from a detox? People don't often attribute these kinds of issues such as low energy, brain fog, low mood, joint pain, etc., to food. But what you eat affects not just your weight, but your mood, energy, and how you react to the world around you. Many of these symptoms are due to inflammation, which is our body's reaction to toxins all around us. And we'll be talking about that later in the webinar. So a detox can benefit your body by allowing your organs, especially the liver and the skin, to rest and rebuild. It can slow down inflammation that can lead to weight gain, pain, and illness. It can actually clean out your arteries. Cleaner arteries mean less risk for heart disease. And it cleans impurities from the blood as well. It helps balance our microbiome to help with digestion and boost our immune system. And in the process, all of this helps slow down aging. Mm -hmm. And if you have an upset stomach or you're getting a lot of gas or bloating, that could be a reaction to the toxins around you and the food you mm -hmm. eat. And a detox would alleviate these kinds of problems. And a five-day detox will get you on your way to relieving these kinds of symptoms. So we mentioned uh, these benefits of a de detox over time. But what can you expect in just five days? So for one you'll gain awareness of what it means to eat healthy, alkalizing foods. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. You'll also start getting rid of some of that winter bloat and lethargy and getting clarity on what it really means to feel better. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean, really mean, to do <laughs> a detox? Right. Everyone exactly. has a different idea of what it means um, to detox. And so first we want to you know, understand exactly what that means for us anyway. And you have probably heard the term before. Right. So many detox pro programs hope to sell us their sometimes expensive products that promise to help our bodies detox. But believe it or not, our bodies are uniquely equipped to remove toxins and heal themselves without the need of expensive supplements. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is feed our bodies real food that help our body help itself. And these foods take the stress load off of our organs and allow mm -hmm. them to concentrate on what they are meant to do. By eating healthy foods, we automatically are avoiding many of the toxins that bombard our body every day. So the question is then, what are these toxins and where do they come from? It's not just what we put into our bodies, but it's also things that are around us. So basically, toxins can come from three different sources. Our lifestyle, our environment, and what we eat. Mm -hmm. So these lifestyle toxins involve daily activities or interactions that produce stress in our lives. You've heard the term toxic relationship. But it's also things like lack of sleep, job stress, or other worries, and lack of exercise. Um, they're all lifestyle issues that can lead to toxicity of the body. And with time, these lifestyle issues can cause long-term stress. And stress can actually cause physical damage to your cells. And this is 
what we know as inflammation. Mm -hmm. And if steps aren't taken to reduce the inflammation, this can lead to chronic illness. All right, which we do not want, right? No. So it's amazing how many people don't realize the importance that sleep and exercise have on their health. As health coaches, we help our clients rid themselves of these lifestyle toxins. Here are some practical steps we address in our program that you can, that you can start implementing right away. So you can do this by changing some of your habits. Avoid overscheduling yourself. Set a bedtime routine and stick to it. Add some type of physical activity to your week every day. Take care of yourself. It's so important. Oh, yeah. That one is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're and traveling in an airplane and they tell you to put on the oxygen mask first before helping someone like a child with their mask. The first time I was, you know, I heard this on an airplane, I was really stunned. You know, I'm going to help myself first. <laughs> but it makes perfect <laughs> sense. We can't take care of others if we don't take care of ourselves first. All right. And as, as women, especially as mothers, uh, you tend to do that, but mm. we need to take care of ourselves. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a matter of taking a deep breath and slowing down. Mm -hmm. And something just as simple as chewing your food more slowly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as we said, toxins are also found in our environment. And, you know, it's amazing to think, but since 1950, at least 70,000 new chemical compounds have been invented and dispersed into our environment. Wow. And only a fraction of these have been tested for human toxicity. Hmm. And as more toxic chemicals have been introduced, the level of toxins stored in the fat tissues or fat cells of our bodies have risen. And studies have shown that some toxins store in our bodies for life. So... Where are these toxins hiding? They can be found in the air around us, but as byproducts of car exhaust, of course, or industrial plants or secondhand smoke. They're also found in our water from pesticides that are leached out of the soil into our water supply or chemical waste produced from manufacturing. They're also in our cleaning products and room deodorizers. Even prescription drugs that we take for one problem can cause factors that stress our bodies. And even supposed health and beauty products such as toothpaste and makeup. And in the Metamorphosis 5-Day Detox Program, we'll share with you ways to minimize toxins in your environment and provide resources for finding safer products. I know, and, right? So mm -hmm. many of these products cause stress to the body because they contain substances called endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. So estrogen is one hormone that is particularly affected by these disruptors. By the way, many people don't know this, but this can affect men as well as women. Mm -hmm. So a hormone is a chemical messenger in the body that travels in the blood to organs and tissues and signals them to do the work they were designed to do. So basically, they're directing traffic in the body. They control things like reproduction, metabolism, which is our energy levels, growth, even mood. So you can see how important it is that they function properly. So these endocrine disruptors that I mentioned earlier, they prevent the hormones from doing their important jobs. Mm -hmm. These endocrine disruptors, mostly in the form of bisphenol A, or you probably have heard it as BPA, mm -hmm. Phthalates and parabens are found in the ingredients of many everyday products we use. So I'm sure many of us are aware that they're in plastic bottles and containers. Um, the BPA is in food can liners. Um, mm -hmm. They're also in detergents, flame retardants, toys, kids' toys, That's surprising. cosmetics, and pesticides. And studies have shown that these dangerous chemicals are being absorbed and are accumulating in our bodies. All right. And, you know, something interesting, too, I'm just going to add this, Mary Ellen. Um, yeah. Many people don't know, it, the receipts from grocery stores have trace oh amounts of BPA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a place 
something that we get every day. Mm -hmm. And just as an aside, there's a link in the Metamorphosis Program Guide to a list of companies that do not use bisphenol A in their cans. So that's mm -hmm. something good to know. Yeah. So that brings us to the third area where toxins can be found, and that is in the foods we eat and drink. And that is a topic that's near and dear to our hearts, right, Mary Ellen? Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So hormone, hormone disruptor, disruptors, such as phthalates that we talked about, can be found in our foods. They can be found in the meats that we eat, such as poultry and beef, and in dairy products, such as butter, cream, and cheese as well as in cooking oils. Believe it or not, you really are what you eat. And if that is the case, we want to be eating foods that promote, promote health and not cause disease. Yeah, so let's take a look at how our bodies deal with these toxins in the foods we eat. So as we okay. already mentioned, yeah, the body is uniquely capable of healing itself and making sure everything is running the way it should. And it's able to do this because we have several organs that target toxins and eliminate them. Um, each of these has a very specific detoxing job. So, for instance, the skin, as we know, removes mm -hmm. toxins through our sweat, and that's why it's important to take a shower after we exercise to remove the toxins from the skin surface. And the colon does a great job of removing fat-soluble toxins, and the kidney flushes out the water-soluble ones. But one of the most important organs in the body that helps with detoxing is our liver. It's amazing. Um, so, Evie, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the liver does. Sure, I would be happy to do. Okay. And uh, this won't be complicated. We'll, we'll keep it simple. Um, but as you can see in this illustration, the liver is quite a large organ. In fact, it's the second largest organ of the body and weighs about three pounds. This workhorse doesn't even get the respect it deserves. If you ask most people to rank their most important organs, the liver probably isn't tops on their list. But day and night, the liver is breaking down food, fighting infection, and filtering bad stuff from our blood. One of the most important jobs of the liver is to filter out the toxins in the body and package them so that the body can eliminate them. Without this important step, we wouldn't be able to get rid of these harmful toxins. Yeah, so as we mentioned before, the liver does a lot for our body. Helping to remove toxins is just one of its many functions. It's also responsible for regulating blood sugar levels, mm -hmm. storing fat, helping excrete hormones, cholesterol, drugs, and producing bile to help break down fats. So by controlling our diet and eating liver-supporting foods, we're lessening the burden on the liver so it can do a better job. So our goal is to make our liver happy. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we all want happy livers, right? <laughs> so Mary Ellen, um, it sounds like a healthy liver also helps with regulating sugar, yeah. which in turn helps reduce cravings and control weight. Absolutely. Sounds to me like that's something we are, we're all interested in, huh? Yes, Absolutely. So everyone might be asking themselves right now, if my body is able to rid itself of toxins, why do I need to do a detox? Well, that's really a good question. <laughs> so yes, the purpose of a detox program is not just to eliminate toxins from your body, but to help your organs of detoxification, especially your liver, work more efficiently. And we mm. want to take away any distractions from the liver so that it can concentrate on detoxing. And first, we want to limit the amount of toxins that are entering our body by eating healthy, liver-loving foods. But just as importantly, we need to give clean nutrients to the liver so it can work efficiently. Wow. Um, did you know that the liver rebuilds itself every 90 days? I know. You taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> of course, you want your next liver to be built out of the best foods so that it can do its job effectively. Another way to think of it is this way. Your liver is like a car filter. And when your car is driving in an area that is smog and dust polluted, you need to clean that filter more regularly or it won't be able to do its job as effectively. The same thing happens to our livers when, we expo when we're exposed to more pollutants like we just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So Evie, do you want to tell us about what kinds of foods help the liver? 
Sure. <laughs> One <laughs> of the ways to assist the liver is to eat foods that keep the, that keep the body alkaline or less acidic. Many of you probably remember studying acids and base from your high school chemistry days. Well, simply put, the body functions best when it's more alkaline. The opposite of alkaline is acidic. And if the body is too acidic, harmful bacteria can thrive, causing more inflammation, making the liver's job more difficult. Basically, the liver gets overwhelmed. A detox helps the liver by eliminating foods that cause this acidity and inflammation and replacing them with alkalizing foods that help balance the body's pH levels. And here, these are some of the foods that create an acidic environment for our bodies. So you'll see sugar, foods high in simple carbs, refined flours, dairy products, mm. animal proteins, including beef, pork, poultry, and fish. Yes, I said fish. <laughs> Processed <laughs> foods that contain preservatives, fillers, chemical dyes, and emulsifiers. So, you know, just check in and ask yourself, are these foods in my diet now? Probably some of them are. Right. Um, Mary Ellen, it looks like um, in the picture that these are all like restaurant or store-bought foods. Yes, and that's because many store-bought foods are processed and have a lot of these harmful ingredients. I like to say if it has a commercial on TV, don't buy it. <laughs> ha, I like that. That's good. <laughs> Fun. Okay, so what are the alkalizing foods then, if we've mm -hmm. now looked at the acidifying ones? Mm -hmm. uh, not surprisingly, a lot of these foods are whole natural foods, like dark green leafy vegetables filled with chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a powerful detoxifying agent. Mm -hmm. Bitter greens such as arugula, cilantro, parsley, and especially watercress. Mm -hmm. Broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables are also good alkalizers. And surprisingly, citrus fruits that we think are so acidic, they're actually alkalizing to the body. Mm -hmm. So this includes lemons and grapefruits. Um, there's garlic and ginger, berries, beets, green sprouts such as alfalfa, broccoli, and mung beans. Green tea is another one that's also a good alkalizer. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but spices can also be very alkalizing. Uh, turmeric in particular is a great example. Mm -hmm. So another aspect of our five-day detox uh, involves eating with the seasons. And spring is a natural time for liver support and detox. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it, our ancestors ate seasonally because, you know, that's how they had no choice. That's how right. it was. Fresh greens right. grew in the spring and fruit ripened in the summer. It still does. Root vegetables <laughs> kept them going in the fall and into the winter. And our bodies learn not only to adapt to this way of living, but to thrive on it. And these days right. we can eat foods year round, but that doesn't mean that that's the best way for us to eat. So I see in the chart that a lot of the alkalizing foods we mentioned earlier are available in the spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So according to traditional Chinese medicine, we should be eating cooling foods in the spring and summer and warming foods in the fall and winter. And not surprisingly, foods that are cooling are also being harvested in the spring, while warmer root vegetables are harvested in the fall. And our program will center on those cooling foods that assist our bodies during the spring and also support liver function. They help us lighten up after eating heavy warming foods throughout the cold months of the year. And we also include a few warming foods to balance with the cooling effects, and that's part of the traditional Chinese medicine philosophy as well, so that our bodies don't really get shocked with the, tr with the transition. Right. Exactly. Thank you. That was great. So here is why this program will be helpful to everyone out there listening. The Metamorphosis 5-Day Spring Detox is not a fast or a quick fix for weight loss, although many do find that they lose weight. Mm -hmm. uh, you will eat healthy, real whole foods, including three meals a day plus snacks if you're hungry. You will not be juicing foods, which removes important fiber, although we do have recipe options for breakfast smoothies, which are blended. You will be able to eat meals with other members of your household. 
And the program does not follow one specific, I'm sorry, one specific popular diet, and it's not a fad diet. It does not remove foods that cause toxicity, such as some of the harder to digest foods like animal products, processed sugar, gluten, dairy, alcohol, and caffeine. You'll also learn how to change your toxic thoughts and behaviors. So, okay. I heard a couple of things in there, Evie. Uh, <laughs> no dairy, no bread. So you might be thinking, what? Isn't calcium important? How can mm -hmm. I live without bread? But, you know, just look at dairy foods first. Dairy foods are acidic and can cause digestive problems for people who can't digest lactose sugars found in dairy. And actually 75% of the world's population is lactose intolerant, making dairy one of the most inflammatory foods in our modern diet. Mm -hmm. And dairy foods are not the only source of calcium in our diet. The recipes in the detox program include calcium-rich foods such as leafy green vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, and other veggies. And, um, you know, in addition, toxic hormones and antibiotics are used in raising cows. And right. dairy causes mucus, which is like glue in the body where bacteria and viruses grow. And this mucus can also aggravate the sinus and lead to ear infections. So, Evie, you want to tell them about bread? <laughs> yeah, what about bread, right? Well, if dairy is the second most inflammatory food, gluten is the first. Eliminating gluten, which is the protein found in grains such as wheat, rye, and barley, is a great way to take off some of the burden from the liver. Eating food that contains gluten can cause chronic health issues such as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, joint pain, itchy skin, belly fat, and irritable bowel sim syndrome. Believe it or not, we can also be an appetite stimulant, which mm -hmm. makes us want to eat more. Yeah. So you'll be happy to hear our five-day detox program. Uh, in it, we eliminate gluten in the delicious recipes that we provide. Mm -hmm. so, so let's talk more about what you will be eating and drinking. You will be eating lighter with support from detoxifying dishes, including main meals, soups, smoothies, nourishing detox waters, and teas. Some of our favorite recipes include our detox water recipes that you can have on hand in the refrigerator and drink throughout the day. Mm -hmm. A favorite of mine is the blueberry cream smoothie with ginger. Oh, uh, it's one. a slightly sweet but filling smoothie that is delicious for breakfast or an afternoon snack. Mm -hmm. And here are some pictures of our some of the other recipes from our detox cookbook. There's also, in addition to this, there's a detox watercress soup. Evie was saying that watercress is one of the best detoxing um, foods. So we wanted to inclu include that. And you can have that soup as a lunch with quinoa or as a snack. And there's um, a detox salad, maybe baby kale and fennel, which is a great detoxer, radish, and a lemon vinaigrette dressing. And the program includes 34 recipes for beverages, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack menus, um, more than enough for the five days. And you'll see all of these foods on the program, but it's your choice of which recipes to choose from the cookbook. Right, exactly. Uh, and, and Mary Ellen, it's also interesting to note, too, that um, you can also have leftovers, so you won't, don't have to be yeah. necessarily cooking every single day. Yeah, I, I definitely did that. I cooked, you know, you cook once and you eat twice. Or exactly. Three times, or you freeze exactly. half for, you know, a week or two later. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. So... We will focus on lifestyle and related habits to support a complete gentle spring detox as well. Related to the food program, our program guide has suggestions in it such as how to give your body time to get hungry or mm -hmm. tips to make it easier to drink water because it is so important to detoxing your body. Suggestions for getting a good night's sleep and practicing self-care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So during the five-day program, we'll give you support to help you detox your thoughts. 
a gentle detox not only includes cleansing your liver, kidneys, and skin, but any toxic thoughts, right? Because that's mm -hmm. all related to that stress we talked about. And right. we'll help you with this through positive self-talk exercises. Exactly. Then, after the five days, you'll be able to schedule a one-on-one -on -one wrap up session with your health coaches, that's us, uh, to determine how to move forward with your health goals. So you may wish to continue to eat clean on those days with occasional treats from time to time. Uh, you'll want to decide if you will add back in caffeine, gluten, dairy, alcohol, beef and pork, for instance. So this is where health coach support comes in handy. This is all part of the five-day detox program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you sign up, we'll send you both our program guide and our cookbook. So the, the Metamorphosis Five-Day Spring Detox Program Guide provides everything you need to know for the five days. And you'll want to read it ahead of time. Uh, the program starts March 5th, so you want to read that ahead of time so you'll have time to prepare your space and stock your kitchen with healthy ingredients. Right, exactly. Our detox program cookbook contains some of our favorite breakfast, lunch, dinner, side salads, snacks, and dessert recipes with photos of each. They've all been tested and tried by Mary Ellen and me. So, And mm -hmm. as we mentioned, there are 34 recipes in all. Mm -hmm. So inside the program guide, you'll also have an easy reference shopping list for all of the foods that you need. Mm -hmm. and a five-day menu planner to keep you on track. And we'll also give you a handy guide with practical tips on how to detox your home. Right. Oh, and uh, by the way, the shopping list and menu planners are really great tools to have. They make shopping for the week easy. You can print out the shopping list and check off what you need depending on the recipes that you've chosen. And the foods on the list are organized by location in the store, making your shopping trip super efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, one of my clients did a, an early sneak peek and uh, sort of an early trial and told me that just shopping for the ingredients just already made her feel so much lighter and healthier. Right. She was really doing something good for herself and getting these stock ingredients into the house. Is key, right? Yeah. To have yeah. them when you need them. Yeah. Makes sense. So, and of course, throughout the program, you can receive our support through private email. We'll also host a closed private Facebook group where you can share your experiences and questions with the rest of the group. Since this is a private group, uh, everything that is posted is confidential. Mm -hmm. And as we mentioned before, your private one-on-one -on -one wrap-up call with your coach with further help uh, will help you with your next steps or any questions that you might have. Mm -hmm. So, Mary Ellen, uh, maybe you could tell us a bit about what the individual wrap-up call is like. Sure. So, we want to make sure that you had a successful experience with the five-day program, and most importantly, review your progress and make a plan for your continued success. So, we'll discuss how you can implement what you've learned for continued wellness, and this is part of the metamorphosis program. There's no additional coaching charge for this. Mm -hmm. And we want to exceed your expectations by providing this personal touch. Right, exactly. So the cost. The cost for our Metamorphosis program is $139. As a thank you for listening in on this webinar and getting in on the ground floor of our new program, though, if you sign up by February 28th, you'll only pay $99, which is a $40 savings. Mm -hmm. And as a webinar attendee, you will also receive a bonus of the Healthy Home Checklist to help you identify and eliminate, eliminate the toxins in your home. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we want to ensure your success by encouraging you to sign up with a support buddy to go through the program with you. Together, you can share the experience, encourage each other, maybe even shop together, and mm -hmm. keep each other on track. Mm -hmm. For that reason, we're offering a further discount if you sign up with a friend, a coworker, a family member, a um, stranger that you bump into on the street, uh, <laughs> anyone, uh, just indicate that buddy when signing up and receive an additional $10 off for a total of $89 each. Just a little incentive to get you started. Great. So Evie mentioned those bonus materials you'll, re you'll be receiving. 
So in addition to the $40 savings, if you sign up um, within the next week, you'll receive the Environmental Working Group's Dirty Dozen Endocrine Disruptors, which names 12 hormone-altering chemicals and how to avoid them. And there's also um, information that we wrote up about change your thoughts, change your behaviors. It describes a practice of looking at and identifying unhelpful toxic thoughts in order to improve your feelings and resulting actions. Right. Signing up is easy. So after this webinar, we'll be sending you a follow-up email. Simply click on the attached link to join. You can pay by PayPal or credit card, and we'll start sending you the program materials right away. Yeah, and also, um, once you sign up, we'll send you an invitation to the Facebook group. So you just have to accept the invitation to the closed group on Facebook, and we can start communicating there. All right. And Miriam, um, I did have a question about payment. Uh, someone asked me if they didn't have a PayPal account, whether they can pay. The links that we have, uh, you can use a PayPal account or a credit card as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just, it's the same link. Yeah. Yep. So we hope you found this webinar informative and feel motivated to take some action for your health to try our five-day detox. You will learn so much. And once you purchase the program, it's yours to keep and use again and again every spring or whenever you want to lighten up, clean up, feel better. Um, so just to review, here's what we learned tonight. We learned that toxins are all around us in the food we eat and the world we live in. And by eating alkalizing foods and eating seasonally, our bodies are uniquely designed to filter out these substances that compri um, compromise our health and keep us healthy. And that's really it in a nutshell. In a nutshell. That sounds so good. <laughs> I know there are some questions. Yes, there are. Um, so I had a question from Mary Rose. She said, is the goal to remove bread or remove gluten? In other words, is it okay to eat gluten-free bread or gluten-free wheat? Um, and you know what? I'm just going to, to answer real quickly, and then Mary Ellen, you can add too. Sure. But um, the, the thought is, yes, that gluten is the primary uh, toxin in this case and that is causing problems and it depends how you decide to go gluten free if you decide to go gluten free and eat uh, gluten free products that are processed foods you're probably not doing your liver much good uh, processed foods tend to have the added sugars the and, and other uh, preservatives and chemicals in them that are toxic to your your liver as well. Uh, in addition, by processing the wheat and grind or processing grinding the flours that are used in these gluten free foods, you're still getting. A, foods that are being broken down into sugars very quickly into the body and that taxes the liver as well. Mm -hmm. So the the idea is to stay away from processed foods that call themselves gluten free because they still have other toxic substances in them um, and trying to eat foods that are whole grains, not ground up into flour and then cooked that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it okay to eat gluten-free wheat? There is there is no such thing as gluten-free wheat. Um, mm -hmm. Typically the products are made out of a rice flour or potato starch or something that's a very high starch which as I mentioned breaks down into sugars and will cause the same distress to your liver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, great, any great on that, job Mary? answering the uh, that question. Um, and of course, I agree. You know, in terms of the processing, um, and sometimes those gluten-free products are even worse than you mm -hmm. know exactly um, what you have with the with the gluten. Um, so, it, in terms of the sugars and chemicals, et cetera, like like Evie was talking about. Um, but you know, if you want to get, there are so many different bread substitutes. Um, and you know, you know things like you know pasta. You know, there's there's gluten in pasta and bread. How can I how can I live my life without bread or pasta? Um, and there are so many gluten-free grains that we can teach you to mm -hmm. cook. 
um, different recipes. There are some in the cookbook, um, quinoa, of course, um, right. but there are others too, and they're it's ve they're very versatile, and they give you that um, you know sort of comfort food kind of feeling. Feel um, right. You know, if you're used to having um, you know toast with your eggs in the morning. You can you can definitely do some substitutions like um, grilled tomatoes or avocado to give you some mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a side of fruit um, with some nuts or seeds on it. So right. you're getting something a little bit more substantial. Um, right. So anyway, hope that and answered your question, Ro. And just to, to add, too, in our program, we actually do have, I, we mentioned the smoothies for breakfast, but there's also two porridges, one that's made with quinoa and one that is made with seeds and, and that mm -hmm. avoid this whole issue. So there mm -hmm. are other options. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mary Ellen, I'm going to shoot this, one, or this question over to you. Sonia asks, do you drink specialized water that is more alkaline? Um, and I know that you gave a talk on that, so I'm going to let you start with that. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I drink filtered water from the tap, and I carry it in my um, in my stainless steel mug, 22-ounce mug. Um, I fill that a few times a day. Um, I also love to make um, water infusions, like a big pitcher of water, and put whatever you like in there, lemons, limes, um, strawberries, uh, herbs, whatever, uh, vegetables. Um, I make a different one every week, and it just, you know, makes water a little bit more fun. So, yes, I did do a lot of um, research about water, and actually, uh, if you go onto my um, Facebook page, you'll see um, a demonstration that I did of, I think it's 12 different bottled waters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and you can see the the um, the pH of those waters tested there. Um, the tap water is a perfect pH. It's a, a neutral pH, um, and uh, you know because it is um, uh, there there are standards with tap water. There aren't standards with any bottled waters. Right. Um, and most bottled water companies are just that bottling companies. <laughs> they take, mm -hmm. you know, tap water from municipal sources and put it in a bottle. Um, some of them are a little bit better. They do reverse osmosis or um, they uh, do some purification processes, so they're a little bit better. Um, so if you want to check that out on my Facebook page, that's that's a fun thing to look at. You can also test your own water with the with the pH. Um, but and you know what, too, Mary Ellen, if I could just interject, um, we mentioned how lemon is actually alkalizing. Mm -hmm. By adding lemon juice to your water, you are actually mm -hmm. helping the al alkalizing effect of the water for your body. Mm -hmm. And part of the five-day uh, detox is actually starting your day with a glass of water mm -hmm. with lemon and some apple cider vinegar in it for mm -hmm. that reason. Yeah, so that's yeah. another way to very easily make your water a little bit more alkalizing. Mm -hmm. Great. And okay. you're not wasting all that plastic, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it takes uh, three times the amount of water just to make that plastic bottle, you know, that everybody walks around with. So that's another thing in, in our program, too, that you'll see under the bonus material is other ways to identify, you know, things to get rid of in your environment that are mm -hmm. toxic. Mm-hmm. So I hope that that answers the question, Sonia. Um, I have a question here from Chandra who said, thanks, ladies. Can I drink my probiotic drinks during the five-day detox? And, you know, I'll just, uh, just ask, uh, t t say, taking a probiotic is, is fine. In fact, um, Mary Ellen and I would encourage you, if you're taking a multivitamin, to continue taking that. If you're taking probiotics, continue with that. Mm -hmm. um, it, when you say probiotic drink, though, I'm wondering what type of drink you're talking about. Um, we Just for the five days, we're eliminating dairy, so that if you're talking about a kefir or you know something along those lines, maybe just for the week, you might mm -hmm. want to... Uh, 
stay mm -hmm. away from that mm -hmm. and maybe just take a probiotic um, supplement pill. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, And it, it would depend what is in the probiotic drink. If it's a processed drink that has added vitamins, minerals, sweeteners in it, I would suggest maybe just staying away from those as well. What, what would you say, Marion? I agree. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So um, does anybody have any more questions just uh, for us here? Um, I did have one question that came in that said, um, I will be away for a couple of days. Can I still do the cleanse? And I think um, that's, a, that's a really good question. I've had a couple of people actually ask that. And I guess uh, what Mary and Ellen and I would say is that if you're gone for a couple of days, great, you know, get the material, become familiar with it, and um, do the shopping, and maybe just start a few days later on. But you'll still have access to the Facebook uh, group. You'll still be able to um, hear the input and share with others in the group and when we do the one-on-one -on -one at the end of the session we could just schedule a couple of days later for you so that you can continue mm -hmm. to do the detox on your own for the rest of the you know couple of days and uh, we'll keep the Facebook page open uh, in case you have any questions that come up in the, during those days mm -hmm. anything else to add Mary Ellen no I think that's that's a good plan yeah you want to be able to do it when there's not a lot going on in your calendar. So mm -hmm. if, if you're interested in, if you do have things going on that week of March 5th, I think that's, um, you know, maybe plan it for the next week. But we'll, like, like Evie said, we'll include you in the Facebook group and we'll just, um, you know, schedule the one-on-one -on -one when it's convenient for you after you finish your five days. Yeah. All right. And and I we would encourage you to get the program um, and, and give yourself enough time to read through it because you'll benefit more if you have time to read the advice and do some of the shopping uh, beforehand and so that you're ready to start on the 5th. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Let's see. Wendy says, great to hear your voices. Impressed how clearly oh, you describe to toxic effect, the role of liver, my liver, etc. And you make it sound easy and doable. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. Oh, that's it. nice to hear from her. That's great. He's a so, health coach. Um, <laughs> Oh, the, the other thing, too, is I just wanted to mention, um, I, someone asked me a question about if they said that their husband doesn't eat, won't eat meatless meals, you know, can you still do a five-day detox like this? Well, the, the beauty of this detox is that, yes, it's absolutely, the recipes are family-friendly, and if you have a meat eater in the, in the household that can't go for five days without the meat, then by all means, you know,